Hi, my name is Brian Smith. In this video, we're going to cover the basics of the Virtual Data Optimizer, or VDO. VDO provides inline deduplication and compression of storage, which can help save space if you have duplicated data or compressible data that you're storing. I'm on a RHEL 8 beta system in this example. However, VDO is also available in RHEL 7.5 or later. To get started with VDO, you need to install a couple of packages, the VDO package and the kmod-kvdo package, which I already have installed. For this demonstration, I've downloaded 109 different versions of the Linux kernel source code. And what we're going to do is extract these 109 archives into two different file systems. We'll have one file system that is a traditional file system, and we'll have one file system that's on a video device. And we're going to compare what the results are. So we have several versions of the 4.16, 4.17, 4.18, 4.19, 4.20, and the Linux 5 kernel source code. We should see really good results with video with this kind of data because between these minor versions of the Linux kernel source code, the vast majority of the data is duplicated. And since the source code is text-based, it's also compressible. Over on the left-hand side of the screen, we have our dev VDA5 device, which will be our non-video or traditional disk device. And over on the right-hand column, we have dev VDA6, which will be our device we set up with VDO. Both of these disks are 25 gigs in space. As we go through the demo, everything on the left-hand side will be for that non-video disk, and the right-hand side will be for the video disk. For our video disk, we'll go ahead and set up the video device with, by using the video create command. We'll specify a name of video demo. The device will be VDA6. And we'll set the video logical size to 250 gig which is a 10 to 1 ratio with our physical disk size of 25 gig. The video logical size specifies the amount of space that should be presented as available, and it's very dependent on your workload what you set this ratio to. Since I know there will be a lot of duplicated and compressible data in the Linux kernel source code, I'm going to set this to a 10 to 1 ratio. However, for your environment, you would need to find the appropriate ratio, and that depends on the type of data you're storing. Next, we'll create XFS file systems on both our non-video and our video device. For the video device, make sure you use the minus uppercase K on the mkfs.xfs uh, command. This makes sure it doesn't attempt to discard blocks at mkfs time. Next, we'll run udev adm settle to wait for the device nodes to be registered. Next, we'll go ahead and mount these file systems. For the traditional file system, we'll mount it at slash mnt slash non-video and for the video one, we'll mount it at slash mnt slash video. If we run a df command, you can see our traditional file system is reporting 25 gigs, and our video one is reporting 250 gig, which was the video logical size that we specified. If we run video stats, we can see the video specific information, such as the actual size, which is 25 gig, the used space, which is 3 gig. There is a little bit of overhead for video, and that's why it's reporting 3 gig of space here. We can also see that there's 22 gigs available and that we're currently using 12%. The lower left and lower right screens will show the DF and video stats for the respective file systems as we go through the demo. Next, we'll go ahead and start extracting those 109 versions of the Linux kernel source code into these two file systems. This will take quite some time to extract all these files, so I'm going to go ahead and cut the video here in a few seconds. What we're expecting to see in this demo is that we should be able to fit many more versions of the Linux kernel source code onto our file system that's backed by the video device compared to the other file system. And at this point, I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while these files are extracting. Okay, at this point, the file extractions have been running for a while, and you can see over on the left-hand side, remember this is our traditional file system without video. It is now at 100% used, and the extractions are now failing, seeing that there's no space left on the device. Over on the right-hand side of the screen, which is our file system that's built on the video device, you can see that the extractions are still running, and that in fact, if you look down in the video stats, it's only reporting that it's using 16% of our 25 gigs of space. This is because video is deduplicating and compressing the data that's being written to this video device. There's still quite a few Linux kernel source code files that need to be extracted onto the video device. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video again while these file extractions are running on the video device, and I will be back once those have completed. Okay, at this point all the file extractions have completed, and if you look over on the left-hand side, which is our non-video based file system, you can see that we have 28 versions of the Linux source code that were extracted. It actually ran out of space midway through that 28th version. 
If you look over on the right hand side, which is our file system based on the video device, you can see it made it through all 109 versions of the Linux kernel source code that we attempted to extract to it. If we run df-h on our non-video based file system over on the left hand side, you can see that it's using 25 gigs of space and is at 100% use. Over on the right hand side, you can see if we run df-h on our video based file system, that it's reporting that we're using 101 gigabytes out of our 250 gig logical size. And if we run video stats, you can see it's reporting that we're only using 6.1 gig of our 25 gigs of physical space or 24%. So not only were we able to extract all 109 versions of the Linux kernel source code, we ended up only using 24% of the space on the video device. Next we'll take a look at a graph that shows the used space during the file extractions for both of these file systems. The red line is the non-video based file system and this is the space used as reported by the df command and the blue line is the file system that is on the video device and this is the space used as reported by the video stats command. You can see for the non-video based file system that the used space went up at a steep rate until it maxed out at 25 gigs and ran out of space during the extraction of the 28th kernel version. For the blue line, which is the file system based on the video device, you can see that the used space goes up at a slower rate. This is due to the deduplication and compression functionality of video. Using video on a system requires additional system resources and can impact system performance. The amount of space savings is highly dependent on the type of data that is being stored. Please refer to the Red Hat documentation on video for more information. Thanks a lot for watching the video and I hope you have a great day today.